I'm with Syed Al Tamari from Bridges for Bethlehem. Now, Syed, what is Bridges for Bethlehem? Bridges for Bethlehem is an organization created by Palestinian Saeed and the American friend Diana, who I met here in Manger Square uh, because I'm working as a tour guide. I, I used to meet too many people. And when I met this lady, she was very interested to know Palestine and Palestinians and how is the community living in Bethlehem and around the West Bank. And when we had coffee together in Casanova, I just got the idea to told her that why we should not build our own organization, you and me as American and Palestinian, who can work together to build peace and businesses and help people who really deserve help in this country. Then she went home to the USA, to Florida. And after uh, one month, she uh, called me and told me, Saeed, I'm starting building my organization in America, and I want to make it official in the USA. Then uh, after three months, we got the permission from the US government to have our organization working, and it is a non-profit organization. And from that time till this time, we are working every month with the new projects, with the new donors, with the new donations to build the small projects in the city of Bethlehem, and even some places in the West Bank. Our main goal was building the stables, buying sheep for families from one to five sheep. Families were interested to build their own small farms. We did one in Nablus, one in Bethlehem, one in a village around Bethlehem. And we helped the Church of the Nativity, especially the Catholic part. We made agreement with the Father Rami to support some families with the food boxes which is we paid for that. We helped even LifeGate, giving some money for therapist, therapist massage for the children who really were born disabled, with disabilities. And nowadays we are focusing on schools, which is the Bethlehem University. And we paid more than $6,000 for some students who are studying there. And we are still working on this project to support more students too. So you're helping and being a foundation to help other charities here in Bethlehem? Yes, we are now trying, we're trying to build a small projects with other organizations and charities. We did the last time in Beit Sahur, we bought flowers for a greenhouse for uh, Al Malad organization. It's in Beit Sahur and we bought for their kitchen, they have a special kitchen. We bought sugar and, and some fats and some flour to make special sweets to support the women who were really getting their income from this kitchen. Can you tell us a bit about Bridges of Hope? Bridges of, of Hope is connected to Bridges for Bethlehem because life all is about hope, you know. And Bridges for Bethlehem is giving people hope. And we are not really talking about all Palestinians in this land, but we are talking about the Palestinians we try to help. So we try to give them more hope and to not to give up and to know that there is some people who really care about them by giving them very small projects. Mm. And our dream is big, so the hope is still existing for big dream, for big organization, and to build big projects. So the hope is connected to our organization because it is what we should not lose as the Palestinians, mm. is the hope. Mm. Now you've already mentioned it. Tell us a little bit more about the Charitable Farm Initiative. We are very interested to build more farms in the Holy Land because we need people to have income back from these farms. Because sheep here is very expensive and the meat very expensive. And we are interested to build more farms for these who really can take care of the sheep. We cannot give the sheep for someone who cannot take care of the sheep, but we can give it to people who really uh, can care and can feed the sheep. So the farms are... Our goals in the beginning of the organization, we started it with uh, farms and building stables. Now, after we really saw our community has different cultures, we decided it to move from farms to other things because not everyone is interested to have sheep and farms and not everyone has the land to build his own farm, especially in the cities. And because the settlers and the Israeli settlements around Bethlehem area. It's not easy to find really land to build a big farm, which is we are now trying to build our own big farm as the bridges for Bethlehem. Mm. Then from our big farm, this is our dream, to have big farm, then 
From this point, we can start giving people sheep from our farm as a gift mm. and donations. So it must be exciting to be able to, to go out and give a sheep or give some sheep to a family, especially the children. Do they get excited? They were so happy, people who got the sheep, and they were having uh, like God's gift because sheep has meaning here in this country. Mm. You remember uh, Abraham and even Jesus and even uh, Muhammad, all of them were like shepherds for their people and their communities. And the sheep here has meaning in every religion. So we are trying just to make people happy having these sheep. And in the same time, the most important for us is to build income during uh, the COVID and Corona. There is no income at all in Bethlehem city because we were independent on tourism. But now people really have no work and no income. And uh, we are trying just to give them sheep to get the milk and the meat and they can make it big farm. So you're wanting them to breed these sheep so that they can actually produce more money for themselves? Yes, this is what we are really trying to. We need to start from five sheep and they want them to have 10 more sheep from the five sheep, which is this happened in a village around here. It's called Chawara. We give them five sheep. He has now 15. And there is a guy in Nablus. We give him five sheep and he has now uh, at least 13 sheep. And this is what we are really interested in. We would like to build small businesses and we were not really willing to give them the sheep to eat them. That's our goal. That's what our agreement with them. We told them, take the sheep, feed the sheep, make more baby sheep. And then when you have more sheep, then you can decide what to do. But the first five sheep must be 10. This is what we told the people who really got the sheba from us. Do you go back to visit the farms? Yes, I did it like a few times. And I saw the children with their parents around the sheep in the, in the stable. We were happy, joyful, you know. It's very interesting to see these moments with the people who really had nothing and then get something now from us. Now, at the moment, you're trying to fundraise some money for a boy that's blind. Tell us a little bit about his story. This boy, uh, his name is uh, Kinan, and he was born blind, and he needs a surgery, and this surgery never can happen in uh, Palestine because we don't have the doctors. So his parents, who is poor, and they send the baby boy to Hadassah Hospital in Israel, and Hadassah asked them about 100,000 shekels, which is $30,000. And as the bridges for Bethlehem, we decided it, to fundraising in our Facebook page and we collected uh, about uh, $2,000 and we give it to his father and then his father finally found a Palestinian doctor who can make it less than Israeli doctors and he did the surgery in Hebron and we covered 60% of the surgery and the baby Kina now can see and he has another surgery for his second eye which is hopefully we will do another fundraising to continue uh, his treatment. So he can see now through one eye? Yes, he can see through one eye. And unfortunately, we paid his, for his first operation, but the doctor did not succeed. Mm. And we paid for the second, which was really good. So he, he had two uh, operations. Mm. So, but the second one was another doctor with a good hand. And the God gave this boy the hope and the, and the gift to see again. So if he hadn't had this operation, he would be blind today? Yes, he will be blind forever. So now can they work on his second eye so that he can see through his second eye? Yes, this is what we are really working on to make another operation for his second eye, which is we are waiting the doctor to give us the date. And from that point, we will start our fundraising and our own even donation. I did donate from my own money. Even my partner did from her own money, plus the donations from Americans. Uh, mostly Americans people. Now, Bridges for Bethlehem has published a book. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, Bridges for Bethlehem published a book which is uh, about Ain Karim. Uh, do you know Ain Karim? It's in Jerusalem. That's where, when the Palestinians exiled in 1948. That village now is empty. All the houses are empty where Christians, Muslims living there. Now only the settlers who are really living there and the Bridges for Bethlehem founder, Diana, wrote a book about Ain Karim and she was really interested to connect this book with this organization to promote Palestine and Palestinians to other nations, especially Americans 
who really have no idea about Palestinians and about Palestine. And when we are talking about Ain Kerim, we are talking about one of the most beautiful villages in Palestine, in the historical Palestine, which is now occupied by the Israelis. So this is the book was about the Palestinians uh, immigrants and Palestinians uh, exile and Palestinians uh, safari, which is connected to our history because we suffered a lot and we are still suffering in this land, honestly. Now you're a tour guide and we've just had coronavirus. How difficult has it been for Bethlehem at this particular moment with coronavirus? Bethlehem is Palestinian city and in my perspective it is international city. Without internationals in Bethlehem we cannot live. Without Christians uh, visitors, without even uh, tourists, we cannot really live because 80% of our economy in Bethlehem, in the city of Bethlehem, is independent on tourism. But since COVID, till this moment, all the shops are closed, tour guides do not work, all the travel agencies are closed. And to be honest with you, we are really sad that our government is not doing anything to, to any one of us. I'm talking about the people who are working in tourism. So we just get nothing, no support. Even our message is not really reached to the leaders of, of Palestine. So we are really, as a people working in tourism, suffering, and we are even having brain problems, mental problems, since we don't know how to find other way, which is the only way is to cross to Israel to work construction work. But not everyone is able to buy the permit and not everyone is able to work physically. And we are just having this little hope to see when this will end. Uh, now, donors to your charity can become a Holy Land Shepherd. Tell us a little bit more about that. This is my partner, my co-founder, friend Diana, called this because she believes that Jesus was shepherd. And I believe that of our human beings. And everyone giving something to Bethlehem from abroad is shepherd of, of good, shepherd of, you know, God's word. Because what we need is we need good shepherds right now in this pandemic to support and to give us something to let us continue living in this land and standing in this land. Because everyone now is really interested to leave, to leave to any country. But they cannot. But I know how many people really interested and they try every day to leave the country. So we need these shepherds who are Americans or British or Chinese, Japanese, which is we are talking about international community to, to support and to give something. And we call them good shepherds, as we call Jesus nowadays. Why do you do what you do? I do what I do because I believe in humanity. I believe in human being deserve better life. I believe in, uh, in freedom of uh, spirits. I don't like the businessmen who are controlling the city and the country and they don't share what they have and they really don't care. Rich people here don't really help. So I decided that why we don't really help with anything, with any small thing, we can build and we can give some hope and happiness to these people. Last week, uh, we paid 10 houses electricity bills. They have no electricity. We paid for, I went to the electricity company and I paid for 10 houses. And uh, this is making us feeling that we did something for God and for these people who really cannot ask money from anyone because they have the honor. And mostly poor people having the honor not to ask others to give them something. So we are looking for these people who are really having the honor of being poor and being shy and being, uh, you know, respecting their financial situation and don't go to the street and to be a beggar. So this is what we are looking for and we are really interested in. So uh, I do this from my heart because I am part of this land and I am part of this community. We support both Muslims and the Christians. When we paid Bethlehem University, we paid two Christian students and we paid two Muslim students. Because all of us really in this community and in this land must help each other and must build and do something on the ground and with my respect to other organizations, some of the non-profit organizations in this land became like shops, like a business, which is, this is really very bad and sad to see big organizations are talking about Palestine and Palestinians, but when they bring the projects here, we don't see them. 
we have too many, what they call them, non-profit organizations, do not anything for the community. So we want to be different. That's why we are really interested to build the farms and pay electricity bills. We pay even medicine um, receipts. We, we did a lot of, even we, we had like 50 food boxes we spent in the beginning of Corona. It was really, you know, something making change in my life. What's your prayer for the future of Bethlehem? You know, Bethlehem is a very quiet city. I love it so much. And it's the only city I really like to stay. And even I don't like to go to other cities in, in West Bank because I love this city too much. My prayers and my hope for this city to bring tourists back, churches open their doors, peace and love, and to hear the bells of the church every day, the, the calling to pray together. We want this city just to, to live in peace and love with each other. And the most important now we should pray for is to end this pandemic because this is the only city in Palestine suffering. It's the only city is suffering from the pandemic because tourism is the main industry here. And what's your website for people who would like to know more? Our website www.bridgesforbethlehem.com Okay, Syed, thank you much. Thank you, very nice to meet you.